Coach R.P. Horvath, the sport of fencing continues to evolve rapidly. What things are you doing that are staying the same from when you were a competitor to now and what you think is just fundamental to the sport? Okay, what's really the same is uh, the technique doesn't really change. A few things be changing, uh, but it depends on the coaches, you know, but sometimes you feel like, oh, this way it's better. Because when you were a fan, most of the coaches were answers like, oh, this. And uh, some things what you're doing, you try to give it to your uh, kids, uh, pass it to your kids. And what we're doing a lot, situational exercises, um, such as you know, defense, offense, uh, limited uh, uh, actions such as five touch power, two more score, one touch, let's say flash, uh, one touch with counter attack, one touch with parry post. Be doing like five seconds drills. Like you have every tournament you see, every pool about almost everybody in a situation, you're down four three, or you're up four three, three, two, five seconds left. So I want everybody to be prepared for every single situation. Sometimes, you know, we pair them up with different style of fencers against the French defense. So you defense different things, left-handed, right-handed, tall guy, short guy, French defenser, pistol defenser, late action guy, he's slow, he's fast, he's good at point control. So we're doing a lot of situational exercises and uh, obviously the private lesson, that's where you learn the technique. But it's totally different to hit somebody who's doing everything against you to, to hit them. And then a lesson which is a little bit of a lie because you know you learn in the technique the coach gives you the timing the distance mostly in the technical lessons okay so we try to try to use more more situational exercises so i'm hearing that your kind of like open bouting is actually pretty structured and deliberate where you're you're really organizing things in a way that ensures people are getting variety during those open bouts and it's not just Oh, I like this person. Yeah. I'm gonna fence. You know, 50. one mistake I was doing when I was a uh, younger coach, still young, and uh, that I hated repeating myself and giving the same exercises over and over again because I wanted to teach more. But I, I realized that when I'm, you know, asking questions or I give them a little written test or something, that they still don't know the answer. So I, I stopped feeling bad repeating the same actions and, and, and uh, exercises over and over again for month and month and month. So uh, it, it takes years until you actually can deal the few actions that you can pull out any time in a tournament. Now, the, like you said, with the evolution of the sport, since you were a competitor uh, achieving incredible things at the highest level, world championships, what, what do you see still present in fencing today that you're able to show your students? That's a good question. I mean, the, uh, we talked before that the basics, that the basics are the same, so there are things that are never going to change, and uh, it's less and less action, it's much more simple fencing than in, in my age. I wouldn't be that successful right now because of my, my build. So, you know, it's becoming more like basketball, you know. If you were not tall, you were not good for basketball. But fencing, it was never the case, because you can be successful in many different ways, even when you're short. You look at Max Heinzer, and, and this guy doesn't matter his size. But, so, it depends on what type, what type of fencer you are, the mentality, the build. That's how you're going to build a certain style for you. You, you yourself were really known for your foot speed, your footwork, yes. uh, ability to kind of move up and down the strip. What are drills that right now you're sharing with your students to try and condition them into, you know, similar strength on their feet? Mm -hmm. We always do for every class. Also, I barely have such a thing that the kids coming in and, and defense. So we have classes for every age group, even the, the, the most experienced guys as well. And we're putting in at least 20, 20 minutes to 30 minutes footwork every day. We do a lot of squats. We're doing a lot of, uh, first, very soft, technical, a lot of rhythm changes, and uh, the direction changes are very important. And it's so mostly like stop. on the strip fencing specific? On the strip. Uh, no, no, no. Are they doing on like the strip, plyometrics, nice. box plyometrics. jumps? Plyometrics, we're doing box jumps, ladder uh, work, hurdles, and uh, also hand eye coordination exercise. We do a lot of tennis ball exercises, moving forward, back. And after you suddenly change it to a uh, uh, more physical, and you get, get down very deep in fencing position, passing the ball under your legs, so you, for like 31 minutes you have to stay. So we try to switch the building the muscle and working on speed. So the combination of 
both eventually makes the kids much faster, more controlled and safe, so they don't have to worry about the foot. That's the worst, you know, you have many things to worry about, what your opponent doing, what action is supposed to do. And once you, you don't have to you know, worry about your own footwork, that takes a lot of pressure. Awesome, coach. Thank you. Thank you.